Hello, it's me, Crazy Rebecca, Dances with Pitbulls. Welcome to Crazy Quilt Friday. Today, I'm going to show you how I use sweater knits and stretchy fabrics in my crazy quilts. Because I'm always telling you, don't do this and don't do that. Well, I'm going to tell you what to do. Now, this is really pretty, but I have to tell you... It has been passed through several hands, and it has landed with me. It does not fit me, but it fits my red and black scheme, and therefore, I am going to do some surgery here. I want this front part. I don't know if I'll keep the back. This is a quality garment. If it had been larger, I probably would have kept it and worn it. But when it got handed to me, they're like, I don't want it back. Give it to somebody else or do whatever. Well, I, I put those last words in there. But <laughs> it's, it's getting a whole new life. More than just being worn once or twice a year. It's going to be fabulous because look come on isn't that fabulous you know it is you know it is I'm going to take this ribbing off I've got pieces of inches floating but the crying now. So I'm going to take a piece of it and put that with the rest. Okay, what you want to do with this type of stuff is plop it right in the middle. So that your pieces that go around it will hold it down. So like I would sew, let me cut this, put it actually like that, I would sew here. See, it would hold it down. Then I would probably go here, or maybe here, and then here. But, or I would work around some way. But that's to keep it from stretching, because if it's on the corner, let's say, It's going to be hard unless you baste it to keep it from stretching. So that's why I like to keep this type of stuff in the middle. And I'm going to show you another. Remember this fluffy Angora sweater I cut up because again it was too small. Where would it go? It would go right there. My neutral pieces, which is probably, you know. Anyway, you do that. Boom, 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 boom. Could you do this? Yes, you can do this because it's going to be stabilized here, and here, and here. It only You only have this little tiny bit on the edge. 
same principle. Oh, Cross contaminating my crafting <laughs> stuff. This is stretchy. It's beautiful, but it doesn't belong on the edge. It belongs in the middle, or maybe. As the second piece. Then I would probably trim that because I don't know what's going on with that. Well, you get the idea. Let's get a piece, bigger piece of this. Maybe this is buttonholes, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> like that, <laughs> you will stabilize it. So keep them towards the middle, either as the middle or the second piece, but you don't want them on the edge because they'll distort. Clear as mud. I am going to sew of uh, this red and black block on the machine. I'm going to put that first. This second. This thing probably over here. And I may go ahead and grab some other fabrics. And we'll just use this up. And yeah, you're going to see what I mean. Okay, here we are with our stretchy fabrics encased in non stretchy fabrics. And I want to tell you a couple of lessons or a lesson that I learned doing this block. Number one, this, this is not laying very flat. I think it would be better to not sew the two stretchy fabrics side by side like that. I think you should keep your stretchy fabrics in the middle and encase them of course, once, once I get this stitched, it's not going to matter, but it's kind of funky right now. Also, I was not careful on these metal things and I broke a needle. So always be aware of where you're sewing. Okay, it was easier. This is velvet. It was easier to sew this seam with the velvet facing down than it was to sew this. Look what I had to do. So always try to sew your velvet down and be aware, maybe not use such a slippery fabric on it. You may have to baste it. You may have to sew it a couple times. Also, Someone once asked me why I used these big pieces in the corners. And of course, my, I said, I don't know. That's just how I do it. Well, as I was doing this, I had a big piece of fabric, like, like this big. <laughs> I realized that why I do it is to make sure it all covers. And when you sew this together, Like if we sew this, it's not going to be that big. But you could put patches or a big embroidery there. You need some bigger pieces. You can't, well, I'm not going to say you can't because you know what? It's your quilt. If you want little bitty pieces everywhere, you go for it. But as for me, I need bigger pieces because I'm lazy. 
and yeah but look at look at my red and black quilt it's going to be fabulous I was playing with some ties like I said this is a tie here is the fabric from it um, once I get my centerpiece done which you will watch me do it we're going to take some ties apart with the ties I have left and we're going to see exactly how much fabric is in them and how to best use them and I'm gonna I found this when I was pulling stuff out I told Sadie this is going to be the middle of her quilt so what I need to do is to get a big foundation square and go ahead and piece the block with this in it so and so that with I need nine blocks to put my circle my ties on I don't know whether to just keep sewing with red and black or what. I did not do this one because I don't have any neutral fabrics out. But do you see what I mean? Put this in the middle. Put your stable <laughs> fabrics. <laughs> and sew them to the stretchy fabrics. And it will be fine. Don't try to... This needs to be the flat piece and you sew to it. Sew everything to it. Not it to other things. And I think you'll be okay. But here's another important thing for beginners. Experiment. Try everything. Don't take my word for it. Do it. Does that make sense? I hope so. So. I guess that's it for Crazy Quilt Friday. I am feeling renewed that I think I shall go ahead and sew a few more blocks. How many do I have? I have three cut here. Oh, and I gotta find my foundation fabric for this. One of my better ideas. <laughs> so, anyway, I'll see you for Mixed Media Monday.